morning everyone so we are back on to aladdin um part two do you trust me he asked she nodded then jump he cried they landed safely in a pile of hay but before they could get away razul grabbed them angrily jasmine threw back her hood unhand him by order of the princess she commanded the princess repeated aladdin in surprise i cannot release this prisoner said raul the orders for his arrest come from jafar Jasmine rushed back to the palace. The guards just took a boy from the marketplace on your orders, she scolded Jafar. I want him released at once. I'm sorry, princess, but he has already been executed, said Jafar. No, how could you? cried Jasmine. In tears, she ran to her room. It's all my fault, she sobbed to Raja. He was so gentle and brave, I didn't even know his name. But Aladdin was not dead. He and Abu were in the palace dungeon, yet, yet all Aladdin could think about was Jasmine. She's a princess, she, he said to himself. She deserves a prince. Someone like me. Just then, an old man appeared from the shadows. It was Jafar in disguise. I can help you get out of here and find treasures enough to impress your princess, he said. If you help me find a worthless old lamp. Eager to escape, Aladdin agreed. Soon they were on their way to the Cave of Wonders. When they got to the desert, Jafar fitted the scarab pieces together. At once, the Cave of Wonders rose up from the sand. Touch nothing but the lamp rumbled the voice in the cave. Quickly, my boy, urged the old man. My lamp is in there. Fetch it and you shall have your reward. Aladdin and Abu entered the cave. In the first room they found gold and jewels and a friendly magic carpet. The carpet led them to another room and to the magic lamp. But just as Aladdin was about to grab the lamp, Abu reached for the giant ruby. No, Abu! shouted Aladdin. But too late. You have touched the forbidden treasure, thundered the voice of the cave. Now you will never see the light of day. All at once, the cave walls began to crumble. The floor melted into a swirling pool of lava. Aladdin grabbed the lamp, but he slipped. Before he fell into the fiery liquid, he was saved by the magic carpet. They rescued Abu and flew to the entrance of the cave. Just as they reached the entrance, a boulder knocked the magic carpet out from under them. Aladdin fell off, but he managed to grasp the rim of the cave. Help! he shouted to the old man. But instead of helping him, Jafar took the lamp. Angrily, Abu jumped and bit the old man. Ah! shrieked Jafar, throwing Abu into the cave. Aladdin could hold on no longer. The cave collapsed, sealing Aladdin and Abu deep inside. It was quiet when Aladdin woke up. We're trapped, he said to Abu in the carpet. To cheer him up, Abu pulled the lamp from his vest. Why, you little thief, chuckled Aladdin, taking the lamp. There's something written on it, but it's hard to see, he said as he rubbed the lamp. The lamp began to glow, then in a puff of blue smoke, out popped a magical genie. Say, you're a lot smaller than my last master, the genie said. I'm your master, asked Aladdin in surprise. That's right, said the genie. I'm here for your wish fulfilment. You have three of them, to be exact, but no wishing for more wishes. I don't know said Aladdin slyly. You probably can't even get us out of this cave. You don't know, said the genie. Well, watch this. Quick as a wink, the genie wished them all out of the cave. Not bad, said Aladdin, and I still have three more wishes. The genie laughed. All right, but no more freebies. What would you wish for? That's easy, said the genie, for my freedom. But my master has to wish for that, so you can guess how often that happens. Aladdin tried to imagine living inside a lamp. Then he said, I will use my third wish to set you free. But first, I wish to be a prince. With a snap of his fingers, the genie changed Aladdin's ragged clothes into silken robes and Abu into a handsome elephant. Now I am worthy of the princess, said Aladdin, happily as he put the lamp under his turban. It wasn't long before he was being ushered into the sultan's palace. I am Prince Ali Ababwa, Aladdin declared. I have come to win the hand of Princess Jasmine. But Jasmine thought the young man was just another silly prince and she fled from the room in disgust. Later, Prince Ali managed to convince Jasmine to go for a midnight ride on the magic carpet. Is it safe? She replied. Sure, he said. Do you trust me? In a flash, Jasmine remembered where she had heard those words before. Yes, she said softly. Taking his hand, Jasmine stepped onto the carpet and away they soared. Could this be the boy I met in the marketplace? When to Jasmine, she decided to find out. It's a shame Abu couldn't come with us, she said. Abu doesn't really like to fly. 
replied Aladdin. It is you, blurted Jasmine. But Aladdin was still too ashamed to admit he wasn't really a prince. Aladdin and Jasmine enjoyed their romantic ride. Then they flew back to the palace and said goodnight with a kiss. Meanwhile, Jafar had decided to marry Jasmine himself. So as soon as Jasmine was out of sight, the guards grabbed Aladdin. I'm afraid you've worn out your welcome, Prince Ali, Jasmine hissed. The guards tied Aladdin up, threw him into the sea. The weights attached to Aladdin's feet pulled him deep into the water. His turban fell off and the lamp tumbled out. He snapped. Lamp tumbled out. He managed to rub it and the genie appeared. Genie, I want you to save my life, okay? Aladdin nodded slightly and the genie brought him to shore. Back at the palace, Jafar had used his magical cobra staff to place the sultan under a spell. Jasmine, you will marry Jafar, joined the sultan. Never, cried Jasmine. Father, I choose Prince Ali. At that moment, Aladdin just broke into the room. He snatched Jafar's staff and shouted, Your Highness, Jafar has been controlling you with this. In the struggle, Jafar spied the magic lamp hidden in uh, oh, Aladdin's turban. As soon as Jafar escaped, he had Iago steal it. So Aladdin and Prince Ali are the same, cried Jafar when he had the lamp at last. Jafar eagerly rubbed the lamp and the genie appeared. Jafar wished to be sultan. Then he wished to be a powerful sorcerer. He turned the sultan into a jester, Jasmine into a slave and Raja into a tiger cub. I am the most powerful man in the world, Jafar declared. No, you're not, shouted Aladdin. The genie is. You're right, Jafar agreed. The genie's power does exceed my own, but not for long. My third wish is to be an all-powerful genie. Your wish, said the genie, is my command. In a flash, Jafar grew into a mighty genie. But before he could enjoy his new powers, shackles appeared on his wrists and a lamp appeared beneath him. With a giant whoosh, he and Yago were sucked down into the tiny lamp. Ten thousand years in the Cave of Wonders orders to chill him out, said the genie as he flung Jafar's lamp far into the desert. Everything returned to normal. And true to his word, Aladdin used his last wish to free the genie. He then turned to Jasmine and said softly, I'm sorry I lied to you about being a prince. I know why you did, Jasmine answered. Prince or no prince, you've certainly proved your worth. It's the law that's the problem, declared the sultan. And from this day on, the princess shall marry whomever she deems worthy. I choose Prince Aladdin, Jasmine said. Everyone waved goodbye to the genie as he flew off to see the world. Then Jasmine and Aladdin shared a gentle kiss and lived happily ever after. That is your story today, Prince Aladdin and Jasmine. Have a lovely day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.